How does he blow darts with a mouthful of gum? Mmm, it's a orange juice. What's up everyone, this is Orange Juice. Four new cards are being released. We've been granted access to showcase these cards very briefly. I won't be going into detail about card interactions because it's still too early to say anything. So the stats I'm about to show you are not set in stone and are subject to change upon release. Take the clone spell for example. Cloned Lava Hounds did not spawn pups. They found the card to be a little underwhelming so they changed it so the cloned hounds would spawn the lava pups. Another example of a change would be the Electro Wizard. The stats have been changed multiple times before it was revealed in-game. Before I show you gameplay of the four new cards, let's talk Electro Wiz. He lands with a pow, stunning nearby enemies and continues to show off by zapping two at a time. So the description tells us that he's a multi-shot attacker. He's gonna be good against small swarms like goblins and minions. Now let's look at his health. He's slightly more fragile than a regular wizard. He's going to die in one shot to a fireball. He'll also fall in just one swing from a mini P.E.K.K.A. A regular wizard has a medium move speed. The Electro Wizard has a fast move speed, so he's going to be as fast as a mini P.E.K.K.A. His attack is 5 tiles, so this is the same range as a regular wizard. Stats scale at roughly 10% rounded down per level. Without boring out with the exact formula that I used, here's the chart and how he scales. At tournament standards, his spawn damage indicates it's a level 9 zap, so it makes sense to assume the splash radius is 2.5 tiles like a zap. As soon as the Electro Wizard is unlocked in the game, we'll see the Dark Goblin coming next. It runs fast, shoots far, and chews gum. How does he blow darts with a mouthful of gum? Years of didgeridoo lessons. He's a single goblin that deals 93 damage. This means he'll take two hits to kill goblins and spear goblins. He can kill archers, princess, and minions in three hits. Despite being really weak, his attack speed is extremely fast at 0.7 seconds. This attack speed is as fast as a lumberjack. He has the same attack range as a royal giant. This means he outranges inferno towers. He has a very fast move speed, just like his goblin brothers. He shares the exact same health as a princess, so arrows will take him out as well as the log for a positive elixir trade. Calculating his stats, it can two-shot minions one level below it. And the level 9 Dark Goblin can kill a level 1 princess in two hits. With his fast attack speed, he can demolish a skeleton army with an arena tower. He's sturdier than regular goblins, so he'll survive a zap spell. He does not outrange the arena tower. Once the Dark Goblins are unlocked in the game, the Executioner is next. He's an epic card. He throws his axe like a boomerang, striking all enemies on the way out and back. It's a miracle he doesn't lose an arm. He has 1010 health, comparable to a Miner or a Mini P.E.K.K.A. He is a ranged unit that can throw 5 tiles far. This is the same range as a Witch. His attack deals 140 damage twice. So he'll throw his axe, and it'll come flying back and deal another 140 damage. Where he offers splash capabilities like a bowler, and his axe flies back. It's kind of like the log. For the full duration that his axe is flying, this is the area you're denying your opponent from planting any small units. He has a medium move speed, so he walks as fast as a Valkyrie. On the first pass, he can kill skeletons, spear goblins, or fire spirits. On the second pass, it finishes off goblins, archers, princess, lava pups, and ice spirit. His attack speed is very slow. Followed by the Executioner, the Battle Ram will release a little while later. Two barbarians holding a big log charge at the nearest building dealing significant damage if they connect. Then they go to town with their swords. The Battle Ram has more health than an ice wizard. It deals 246 damage. This is comparable to one hog strike. I'm only able to offer limited gameplay footage, but I can talk about its stats. At tournament standard, this level 7 rare spawns two level 9 barbarians. The level 7 barbarian hut also spawns level 9 barbarians, so they should scale the same. So it'll charge like a prince, where it deals double damage. The battle ram ignores troops and goes straight to the buildings. Once it hits the building, the barbarians start attacking it. Just like a prince, the charge did double the damage. The next card scheduled to be released after the battle ram is the Goblin Gang. Spawn 6 goblins, 3 with knives, 3 with spears, at a discounted elixir cost. It's like a goblin value pack. It spawns 3 spear goblins and 3 stab goblins for the cost of 3 elixir. Pretty straightforward card. It's a common card so the leveling is very straightforward. If it's a level 9, it'll spawn level 9 goblins. 
This card is the first of its kind, spawning different troops with different ranges. You'll be able to zap them for a positive elixir trade. Left alone, it'll deal over 1200 damage to your tower. So this is something you do not want to ignore. Electro Wiz should be able to deal with them pretty effectively. I hope you guys enjoyed this sneak peek. I'm unable to show you more gameplay until the day the card releases. I'm super excited for the Executioner. Let me know in the comments what you all think, and what else you might want to know about these cards. If it's a good question, I'll be sure to be answering them in the strategy videos that I'll be releasing when the card unlocks in the game. I read every comment, so don't think your question will be ignored. It's just impossible for me to reply to everybody. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more quality OJ.